Hello, everyone. Thank you for being with me today. We're going to go over this entire event and then bring you up to speed with what we know now that certainly we didn't have the details of the other night. First and foremost, I want to introduce you to two heroes. This is Lieutenant Chad Anderson and Deputy Craig Smith. They both went to back up Deputy Conover, and this occurred on Saturday morning about 1222 in the Hunt Fountain Park on Duff Road in North Lakeland. Deputy Conover was working the area because we had some burglaries in the area. Gangbangers, kids, teenagers, flip door handles, looking for cash, credit cards, and guns. And there had been some of those in the area. We also had had a burglary of the, the concession stand at the park recently. So Deputy Conover was doing what she should when she saw a white Mercedes-Benz in the parking lot. She checked on the person there, and the person just barely rolled the window down, talking to her when she asked, would you show me your driver's license, tell me who you are? He wouldn't respond, he wouldn't get out of the car, he wouldn't cooperate. She noticed that he was dressed all in white as if he were in some kind of religious or cult garb. He certainly wasn't in normal street clothes. So she called for backup and that's when Deputy Craig Smith, Lieutenant Anderson, who were both shot, as well as Deputy Bolito and his trainee and we also had Natalie Ostrich, who is canine, back them up. So now there's a total with the trainees of seven deputies there. So Craig Smith, Chad Anderson go to the door and say, hey, look, man, they tried to talk to him. You've got to, you've got to identify yourself. You've got to come out and talk to us and he wouldn't and his car started rolling they grabbed the window and all of a sudden he started shooting we know now that he shot five times we saw five empty casings he struck lieutenant chad anderson in the left arm it went through the arm and into his chest cavity the projectile lodged between his heart and a spinal column he was fractions of an inch from either being paralyzed from the chest down or killed if it had have gone into his heart or struck any of the, those major arteries in that area. He went down, but he got two shots off before he went down. Craig Smith, De Deputy Smith, was not able to shoot because he was shot and as I reported, there were four gunshot wounds in him. After clearly evaluating him and the medical procedures, he was shot twice. So what we were looking at was in and out holes. So he was shot twice in his right arm and he went down. Deputy Bolito and our canine deputy, Ostrich, returned shots. There was a gunfight. There were 38 shots fired. We hit the suspect eight times, and he was immediately deceased. So now we rush everyone to the hospital. Lieutenant Chad Anderson has had two surgeries. He's still in critical but stable condition. Craig Smith, when he originally went in, was in critical but stable condition, and he has now been upgraded. Obviously, Lieutenant Anderson is still in intensive care, and Deputy Craig Smith has been upgraded and moved to a different floor. But I want to talk to you for just a minute about the suspect. And I want to show you what we found in his car. 
First, the firearm that he used to shoot my deputies and to shoot at the other deputies. It's a Springfield Arms XD 9mm. And in addition to being a loaded firearm, he also had two more loaded magazines in the door petition to his left. So he could have had a small gun battle with what he had alone. In the back seat, he had this is a Ruger 1022 converted to an AR-15. In a backpack, he had a fully loaded 40 millimeter firearm handgun. So let me introduce you to our suspect that tried to murder my deputies, did his best. This is K Mac L Bay. He's 26. That's the name that he has taken on because you see he identifies as Moorish. He uses a number 13 lion-hearted on his Florida driver's license. Beside his signature, he has written ARR, all rights reserved. He's currently homeless. He was evicted from a place in Hillsborough County. He has been moving around. In Pinellas County, he was asked to leave a business area, apparently, last month. We talked to his mother. She said, I don't know this person. She said, I know Kyron Caples, C-A-P-L-E-S. Kyron Caples is my son. He went to Fresno State after three years of college and in study in business, he left. He apparently was radicalized while he was at Fresno State. She said, I raised him as a Christian boy. He was a good man. We found that he didn't have a criminal history. He had a suspended driver's license. So the person that his mother knew and loved, and she'd not seen him in three years since he left California, that's where she lives, until we got that fateful call, she had talked to him and had communicated with him and had on occasion sent him money when he needed help. But she says she doesn't know who this K Mac L Bay is but that's who he goes by now. Here's his identification card, his Moorish identification card. He's a sovereign citizen. The Moorish rejects federal, state, and local law. They don't have to obey it. They're extremist. They're anti-government. They have a potential for violence toward law enforcement. And I will hearken you back, and those of you who have been reporters around here for a while, remember in 2017, on the I-4 quarter, three police officers were shot and killed. A sergeant with the Orlando Police Department, a sergeant with the Kissimmee Police Department, and on that same day, an officer with the Kissimmee Police Department. They were shot by two separate Moorish people, all in 2017. And now let's forward, fast forward to 2024, and K-Mac tried to murder two of my police officers. In addition to their violent activity, they're known for trying to file paperwork. For example, they have filed an arrest warrant for me in the Moorish world with a $1 million bond, as well as some of my other deputies. Not this person, but other Moorish people. We make frequent arrest of these citizens, these Moorish citizens, but we don't publish them because we don't want to market for them. But let me read something to you for just a second. This is an example. Now, here's his ID card, and this is a sample of a card that he had so that 
when they want to hand it to you, he didn't, it would say, and you'll get the mindset, this is a valid and lawful form of identification. See United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, Articles 2 and 33, Section 1. You're being put on notice that any unlawful act against an indigenous Yahundam more is a federal crime and you will be fined $750,000 or more. Any violation of my rights, well-being, or property is your express agreement to be held officially and privately liable for $750,000 for each violation of the bearer's rights in each capacity. If detaining the bearer you also expressly agreed to the fee schedule of $90,000 per hour upon any unlawful detainment and violation of the bearer's right. Payment is due immediately in lawful money. So you get an idea of what we're dealing with when we're dealing with these Moorish sovereign citizens. They're dangerous. And you don't know when. There's been other occasions where they're not dangerous at all. They just file papers illegally. And if you'll hearken back to the, a few years ago, the Florida legislature had to create a new set of laws so that if they tried to go down and file liens against judges or clerks, that that was a criminal event and they could be arrested, and there had to be a mechanism to easily clean those liens and legal paperwork out. We've talked to the mother twice of our suspect, at least twice. I call him, because this is his given name that he wants us to use, K-Mac Elbay. But for mom's benefit, we've talked to Kyron Cable's mom. She is a wonderful lady. She is totally in shock. And she said, as she's going to fly in at some point in time, she wants to meet with the deputies and apologize for her son shooting them. That's a good person. She understands the gravity of what occurred. Are there any questions? We don't know where the guns came from. You don't have to register guns in Florida. They are not stolen. At least they're not in the computer as stolen. And he is not a convicted felon, so he has the right to possess the firearm, or had the right to f possess the firearms. And that conversion, is that legal? It is legal. That, you can, that conversion kit comes with that model weapon. Okay. We see nothing at all. And, and here's the just the most senseless part of this. Well, when you look through this Moorish rhetoric, that's pretty senseless. But he was in a park that was closed. Had he simply identified himself when we found he had a suspended license, he couldn't have driven off. We didn't have to bring any criminal charges against him. More than likely, we would have said, hey, let's get somebody to give you a ride. And that would have been the end of it. Probably not even a citation for being in the park after dark. He was not who we were looking for. We were looking for teenagers that were running through neighborhoods at night flipping door handles. He was not a target. He was not a problem until he made himself a problem. And I think that's what shocks his mother 
and quite frankly shocks all of us because up to this point we see no evidence that he was violent but we saw lots of evidence that he was capable of being violent and we also know that his radicalization has increased over the last three years based on his conduct his ID card showing that he's a Moorish person. So why he decided to murder, we don't know, but we know that's not unusual. When you look at the history just here on the I-4 quarter, and if you search up, you'll see that these folks that are Moorish and some of these other citizens, as they call themselves, have been violent toward law enforcement. Sheriff, I know, you, as you said, you don't want to publicize for sovereign citizens, but can you give us a better idea of how prevalent of an issue this is for your agency? Well, there are sovereign citizens in every county, in every state in this nation. Now, how many? We don't know. We run into them periodically, and usually it's on a traffic stop because they don't have a tag on their car. So you stop them to say, where's, your, where's the tag on your car? They roll the window down about this far. And we say, Wait, may we see your driver's license? I'm not showing you anything. And then they give you a quote like, I am not subservient to the laws of the United States or the state of Florida. You have no right to stop me and interfere with me. I'm a free man or a free woman. And they go into all this nonsense. And we thought it was one more of those. And then we very nicely, very professionally say, sir, ma'am, if you don't open the door, if you don't show us your driver's license, if you don't explain why you don't have a tag, we have to arrest you. I am not subject to the laws of the United States. And at that point in time, we say, ma'am, sir, please, if you don't get out of the car, we've got to take you out of the car. I am not subject to obey any direction by any law enforcement officer. And at that point, we take a punch and we break the window out. We open the car door. We take them out. We put them in handcuffs and take them to jail. And that's what we were doing that night after he resisted us. He had time to think about it, why backup was coming. We didn't rush him. We didn't push him. We talked to him. We tried to communicate with him. He wasn't having it. He was Moorish. He was a sovereign citizen. He didn't have to adhere to the laws of the state of Florida or the United States. And then he shot my deputies, and then we killed him, graveyard dead. He had to know that was coming. There was a legion of deputies around him trying to get him to cooperate. He chose for us to shoot him. He made that decision, and we obliged him. And what we have now is we have two deputies that are significantly injured, critically injured, and their recovery will be months and months and months. And it's by the grace of God that they're alive fractions of an inch and they would be dead anything else before I go we've get, gotten several phone calls polksheriff.org backslash donate we've had people saying we want to help we know that look we're going to give them the best medical care there's obviously their salaries are intact everything's solid but there's a lot of incidental costs that go along whenever someone gets killed and we have people asking us if you want to donate we'll certainly split whatever donations in half I had one man call me this morning and said I'm sending you a check for seven thousand dollars how do I do it but there's a lot of costs because parents wives can't go to work and all kinds of issues so if you want to donate this is how you do it to our charity and then we'll in turn make sure they get the money. All right, God bless y'all. See you later. Yes, keep them in your prayers, our deputies in your prayers, and also keep the dead suspect's family in your prayers because they are 
obviously distraught and have no idea that their son was capable of such conduct. Okay? Thank you.